Every year, millions of tons of wood waste are generated worldwide, and most of it could simply vanish into landfills. But this is where a remarkable story begins, transforming ordinary wood chips, shavings, and even old furniture into solid boards that become the foundation of our everyday comfort. This isn't just manufacturing, it's a second life for timber. Picture mountains of raw material as tall as a five-story building disappearing into steel monster machines only to emerge in a completely new form. And right now, we're about to reveal all the secrets of this process, which combines scale, precision, and a touch of engineering wizardry. It all starts at a massive raw material yard where the foundation for future boards arrives in a continuous stream. Contrary to popular belief, high-quality timber is almost never used in their production. On the contrary, the manufacturing philosophy is all about giving wood waste a second life. Mountains of raw material are brought here, reaching heights of dozens of meters. The foundation is industrial wood chips obtained from low-grade timber. A huge proportion comes from sawmill waste, slab wood, offcuts, and thin battens. Wood processing waste is also heavily used, such as shavings and sawdust generated at furniture factories. A separate and important category is reclaimed timber, Old wooden pallets, crates, and even used furniture are given a chance at a new life as part of chipboard after thorough cleaning. Every batch of raw material undergoes strict incoming quality control. The first stage of cleaning is removing metal inclusions. Powerful electromagnetic separators screen the flow of raw material, extracting nails, staples, and any other metal fragments. The material then passes through screening systems to remove sand, stones, and other debris. If whole logs are used in production, say 20-foot lengths, they must pass through a debarking machine. Inside a massive rotating drum or using special cutters, the bark is stripped away. This step is critically important because bark has a different structure, contains loads of dirt, and significantly deteriorates bonding quality. The prepared and cleaned timber begins its journey along a conveyor belt hundreds of meters long carrying it towards the first stage of mechanical transformation. It disappears into the steel jaws of a giant chipping machine, an industrial monster the size of a small room. Spinning at thousands of revolutions per minute, its blades bite into the timber with incredible ease, transforming solid pieces into a stream of uniform chips a few centimeters in size. But this material is only semi-finished. The resulting chips are too large and coarse. So the next step is finer, more precise secondary grinding, which takes place in specialized particle mills. It's here, amid the roar of high-precision equipment, that the actual wood particles are born, the ones that give the final product its name. At this stage, the geometry of the particles becomes absolutely crucial. For the outer, face layers of the board, which will be responsible for its appearance, very fine, thin, and flat particles are needed. These are produced in knife ring fakers, which literally slice thin flakes off the chips, resembling cornflakes. For the inner, core layer of the board, which forms its structural backbone, larger and thicker particles are used. This creates a strong internal framework that gives the board its final rigidity, bending strength, and the ability to reliably hold fixings such as screws and bolts.
The resulting moisture mass has varying moisture content, which is unacceptable for quality bonding. So all the particles are sent to one of the most crucial stages, drying. Typically, huge drum dryers are used for this. Particles flow continuously into a rotating drum where they're blasted with hot air. The final moisture content of the particles must be within a very narrow range, from 2 to 6%. If the particles are over-dried, they won't absorb the adhesive properly. If they remain too moist during hot pressing, excess steam can literally blow apart the board from within. Now comes the turn of the key component that will transform the loose mass of particles into a monolithic board, the binding agent. Most commonly, these are synthetic resins. The sorted particles enter special continuous action mixers. Inside them, resin is sprayed through nozzles creating an adhesive mist that evenly coats every wood particle. Resin dosage is critically important and typically ranges from 6 to 10% of the dry particle mass. The resin-coated particles, now sticky and ready for bonding, are finally prepared to become bored. They're transported to a massive forming machine where scattered particles give birth to a continuous particle mat. This is where the engineering magic of creating a three-layer structure happens. The forming machine is a complex system that sequentially and with high precision deposits particles onto a moving conveyor belt. First, it creates a perfectly even bottom layer using the finest fraction. Immediately after this, a significantly thicker middle layer is laid onto this foundation, consisting of large and strong particles. Finally, the entire mat is covered with another layer of fine fraction, creating a mirror image of the bottom layer. This precisely calibrated structure, resembling a sandwich, provides unique properties to the future board. Its smooth and dense outer layers are ideal for subsequent sanding, whilst the strong internal layer gives the board its necessary rigidity. The formed but still loose mat passes through a pre-press, where it's significantly compacted. This pre-pressing removes excess air and gives it a shape convenient for loading into the main press. This is the culmination of the entire technological process. The pre-pressed and cut mat sections are fed into the hot press. Inside the press, two powerful forces act simultaneously on the particle mass. Enormous pressure, reaching dozens of kilograms per square centimeter, compresses the particles. At the same time, the press plates, heated to 200 degrees Celsius, transfer their heat to the mat. This high temperature activates the resin, triggering an irreversible polymerization process. The liquid adhesive instantly transforms into an extremely hard and durable polymer, which permanently bonds millions of wood particles together. During this brief moment, the loose mat transforms into a hot, solid, and absolutely monolithic chipboard. Hot boards straight from the press can't be stacked immediately. They need to cool gradually to relieve internal thermal stresses. For this, they're placed in special star coolers, where they're ventilated for several hours. The next step is calibration and sanding. Boards pass through multi-head sanding machines, where wide abrasive belts remove a thin surface layer, bringing the board to its precise specified thickness and creating a perfectly smooth surface. At the final stage, large production boards are cut into standard commercial formats and their edges are trimmed. Finished products undergo strict quality control. Only quality boards are marked and sent to the warehouse.
Every minute, thousands of kilometers of old cable vanish from our world. They're torn from the walls of houses, factories, and machines. And all of this scrap is reborn as pure copper, a hidden treasure more vital than gold for our modern world. Imagine it. Coils of wire that yesterday lay forgotten in a scrapyard are today melting in a furnace at over 1100 degrees Celsius, hotter than a volcano. But the most remarkable part? Copper can be reborn infinitely. So the wire that lit your room 20 years ago might be powering an electric car tomorrow. And stay with me, because at the end, I'll reveal a secret this metal's been hiding, and it will change the way you see copper forever. Every wire you see around you, from old charging cables to industrial coils, has a story. It was part of something, conducting power, carrying signals, bringing things to life. But time moves on, technology is upgraded, machinery replaced, and these cables become waste. But this is where their second life begins. The scrap is gathered from everywhere, homes, offices, demolition sites, even old vehicles. A vast, unseen logistics network of lorries, containers, and depots comes to life. It's a treasure hunt, but the prize is metal and plastic, twisted together in a tangled mess. The first stop, the factory floor. Here, the cables pass through the hands of experienced operators who aren't just sorting, they're industrial archaeologists. This is a critical stage. The quality of the final product depends entirely on the accuracy of this sort. Mix the wrong types of metal and you compromise the purity of the copper, complicating every process that follows. The team here uses a variety of tools, shears, pliers, and specialized stripping machines. The work is fast, but precise. Every coil is unwound and separated into fractions. Bare bright wire, plastic sheathed cables, thick industrial lines, copper, and aluminum. The integrity of the copper must be preserved. It's the heart of the operation. Even the smell on the workshop floor, a mix of old plastic, metal, and dust, tells you that this is where the transformation begins. The coils are separated, the wires untangled, but the real alchemy is yet to come. What were once kilometers of cable are now fed into the heart of the plant. Some call it a shredder, others a dragon with steel teeth. The principle is the same. This beast devours everything. Cable fragments are loaded into a vast hopper. Inside, shafts armed with razor-sharp blades don't cut, they chew. Copper, aluminum, plastic, it's all torn, crushed, and ripped into small pieces. From there, the shredded mix enters a machine where physics takes over. A symphony of centrifugal forces, vibrations, air currents, and magnets goes to work. The light plastic is blown away into one stream. The heavy copper falls into another. The air is thick with dust. The hum of machinery is constant. Operators watch the metrics on their screens intently. This isn't just noise, it's the sound of rebirth. Just like the alchemists of old who sought to turn lead into gold, there are formulas at work here too. But instead of elixirs, there are weighing systems, calibration tools, and purification technologies. Because in the modern world, Magic is just well-engineered technology.
Inside the furnace, fluxes are gradually added, special agents that bind to impurities like oxides, dirt, and residual insulation. They float to the surface, forming a dark crust of slag. This is skimmed off by hand with long ladles, in a heat you can feel through a protective suit. It is one of the most dangerous jobs in the plant, but also one of the most majestic. Here, people witness the purification of old metal with their own eyes. They watch rusty scrap transform into a molten lake that glows like the sun. Even the sound is different here, a deep, guttural, threatening hum. It's the sound of copper saying, I am returning. Once the molten copper is cast into solid ingots, it still doesn't know what it will become. Its future lies in the hands of engineers and the rolling mill. The ingots are transported to the mill, reheated, and then forced through a series of giant rollers, like flattening a piece of red-hot dough. With each pass, it gets thinner. With each pass, smoother. This is how copper sheet is formed, or the feedstock for wire. Next comes drawing. This is where the copper is pulled through a series of progressively smaller holes, or dies. It stretches, thins out, but never breaks. Each die brings new precision, measured in microns. All of this to create a thin, flexible, gleaming copper wire. Sometimes, this wire will be insulated and buried in the walls of a new house. The average home requires around 200 kilograms of it. Sometimes, it will be wound into the motor of an electric vehicle. And sometimes, it becomes the delicate coil in a pair of headphones, carrying music from one heart to another. Every minute, over 17 tons of copper scrap are recycled globally. It's a metal that can be repurposed almost infinitely with no loss of quality. It lives, works, melts, and begins again.